Hi everyone and welcome to this new Tunemotion tutorial. In today's video, we'll be looking at the new sequence tool. The sequence tool is a new type of media that you can find by clicking on media here and coming to the third icon, sequence. The sequence is a new type of video that has been designed to be working with imported animated file. So let's click on the plus here to create a new sequence. By default, it creates an action cam with a first keyframe. If you want to create a second keyframe, it doesn't work in a similar way as the video. As you can see here, we don't have a plus icon to create a second keyframe. It's because first, you need to move the play head to define where in time you want that second keyframe to be placed. So here, let's say I want a new keyframe where my vehicle arrive in my intersection. So I will move my camera and on that playhead, I have that icon that allow me to create a new keyframe exactly there. So now it will move obviously from the first keyframe to the second one, but it's much more precise related to the animated file you have imported. You can also precisely place that in time by going to the property panel on the right here. Something that is very important with the sequence tool is the ability to precisely control your animation. For example, here, as we can see here, my vehicle are a bit too close to each other. So what I can do to fix that is go in the dock and select my police car track, which represents the whole length of my animation. When I created my vehicle's animation in my CAD software, I created an animation of 500 frames. And here I can switch from seconds to frame per second to see that indeed each of my animation lasts 500 frames. So let's switch back to second. Right now, as we can see, the animation, the two vehicles are a bit too close to each other. So what I can do is add a bit of a pause before the police car start to chase my robber car. To do that, I will simply select the bar and move it back in time. So here now, there is a bit of pause before the animation of my police car is starting. So let's pre-visualize that, clicking on play, it doesn't start right away and we can see that the police car arrived a couple of seconds, just one second after the robber car. So right now I'm working with three animated files. So I have the sedan that is arriving on the right. Let's actually move the camera over here and see that this vehicle is simply just braking before the vehicles turn on their left. We have the police car and we have the robber car, the red one. If I'm working with more animated files, I can also expand the dog by moving it up like that. What I want to do with that first sedan here is to really break at the last second. So right now it's very too early. So what I can do, same thing as the police car, I'm going to give a little pause at the beginning. And here it will arrive there, and yeah, that's better. Something I didn't notice when I was creating the animation of the car braking is that at the end of the animation, the wheels of the vehicle come back straight and it doesn't look very realistic. So what I can do directly with Intunmotion is trim the end of the animation by simply grabbing the handle at the end and moving it toward my playhead over here. So here the vehicle will break and after that it will completely stop the animation. If you have some animation that loop, you can also select your animation by clicking on the bar over here. And here you have all the options that you have on the animated file, like set the play mode, play with the speed or the start delay. So I'm pretty happy with the animation so far. I have my car that turned, that one is braking, and I have the police car that arrived just one second later. So now let's actually maybe edit a bit our camera. So we'll select my keyframe. My keyframe is highlighted in pink. That means that now all the settings I'm controlling will affect that keyframe. So here I can change, for example, the camera by going into the film back, one of the new options available within uh, that new version. Let's press on refresh and let's have a look at the different preset options that we have available. 
Let's maybe use a Super 35, an IMAX 70, or maybe just a 16x9 DSLR. I can of course play with the focal length, press refresh, and just play to see the animation happen in our scene. Let's say I also want to change the time of day. It works in the exact similar way as other media. We'll come to the environment and here just play so we have a nice sunset. So now let's have a look at some other examples. So here I just created a second action cam which is from another point of view. And now I just want to follow the vehicle that turn uh, just at the intersection. So here those two vehicles will arrive from the right going to the left. So let's pause right there. And what I want to do here is actually just click on the plus over here to create a new keyframe. If I just want to um, make my first camera a bit uh, a bit like it was filmed uh, by the hand. I can just make uh, some slight movement, um, really, really subtle movement. So uh, it feels like the camera is, is just moving a bit. So we'll come back to the first one. So it feels a bit like we, we are waiting at the intersection. And now straight when the, the car starts to uh, drive in front of me, I'm just going to, to follow them. So I'm going to come over here move my camera to the left, I will click on the plus. Same thing here, I will move the slider a bit later. I'm going to just move a bit the camera and follow a bit the action. So now let's come back over here. I have my camera that is moving a bit. And now, yeah, it's just following the vehicle as they are driving by. So that was not actually possible with the previous media tool and that's also one of the key features of that new sequencer. You can really follow the action uh, of the animated file you are importing. That's why it's called an action cam. Part of the new option that we have within the sequence tool is the ability to make a camera roll. So that's what I have set up here. That keyframe, if I select it, I can head over to the sequence tab and here we have a camera roll option. Right now, this keyframe has a camera roll at zero and that one has a camera roll at minus 18, which is that nice kind of drone look that I wanted to create with my camera movement chasing the action. Now let's say I'm pretty happy with that shot and I want to render an image out of it. For that, we have added that button here, the snapshot icon. When you click on that, it will create a new image that you will find in the image doc. It will save the camera roll you have set up, plus all the location of your animated file. Finally, the last option I want to show you is this smooth speed. As you can see in this camera movement, I'm starting with a slow camera movement, then I have a quick acceleration, then back to a slow movement. That's just because I've set up some keyframe close to each other and some others are pretty far from each other. So now while I am in my sequence, I have that smooth speed button that is available within my uh, sequence tab here on my property panel on the right. If I click on that button, have a look at the keyframe over here. As you can see here, they have been rearranged to create a more smooth camera movement. So I'm going back to the start here. I'm going to click on play and now I will have a constant speed throughout all my keyframes. And that's it for this quick introduction to the sequencer. Thank you everyone for watching the tutorial and we will see you soon for the next one. Bye everyone.